Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. According to the World Health Organization, over 100,000 Nigerians are diagnosed with cancer annually, and about 80,000 die from the disease. As part of efforts to fight cancer in Nigeria, Project Pink and Blue, a cancer awareness foundation in collaboration with the United States Mission in Nigeria, has commenced training of 44 selected oncologists across the country on effective cancer treatment. The training is led by two American medical oncologists, Dr. Tracy O'Connor and Dr. Mike Martin, who are both here with me in the studio this morning, and Ron C. C. W. Chidebe, Executive Director, Project Pink Blue. You're welcome to the morning show. Good to have you here. Thank you, Thank you very yes. much. Thank you. Um, Chidebe, yeah. let me start with you. Yeah. What is Project Pink Blue all about? Project Pink Blue is a cancer fighting um, organization, and we are focused in cancer awareness, oncology education, and um, most importantly, patient navigation. So we've been involved in a number of advocacy in terms of supporting the Nigerian government and also activating the Nigerian government to do what they can to actually reduce the burden of cancer in the country. Because as you can see, the burden of cancer is really increasing by the day, and there is a need to really take more drastic action to tackle the disease. Well, you are conducting uh, a training program now, and we have Mike and uh, Tracy here. Uh, Tracy, what has been your experience since uh, this training program started? We found that there is a really enthusiastic and engaged group of young Nigerian oncologists who are very hungry to you know, strengthen their experience in different disease sites. Um, we were able to serve care both in the clinic um, and spend a good deal of time in the classroom reviewing you know, clinical protocols, basic recipes that we use for cancer care. Uh, Mike, uh, what has been your own experience to? I agree with what Tracy said. The interacting with the young oncologist was fantastic. There's so much energy and enthusiasm in wanting to do things better and wanting to improve things. It was a great experience. And you have a beautiful country. Well, I mean, both of you are medical oncologists, right? Correct. How is that different from being a surgery oncologist or a radiation uh, uh, oncologist so, or organ-specific oncologist? Yeah. So here, my understanding is that the oncologists here are either surgically trained or radiation trained, and then they give chemotherapy or hormonal therapy and, immune, or, and or immunotherapy. Okay, in the United States, we're actually separate, completely different entities are trained completely differently. Me or Tracy would be scary in an operating room, okay, and we have no idea of how to give radiation. But we, what we do is we use chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and different targeted therapies to fight cancer. Um, so we're trained very differently. And okay. so we're much more specialized in what we do. But the oncologists that you have interacted with in Nigeria, they seem to do everything, right? They either do surgery and medical oncology or radiation and medical oncology. Okay. But uh, uh, let me come back to you, Chidebe. Yeah. I see you do a lot of outreach programs. Yes. Uh, people, you know, uh, celebrities wearing uh, pink and blue yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what quality of response have you received, either from government or from other people who volunteer to be part of, of your program? Yeah, so it's been really amazing. I mean, I would really say any, this anytime, anywhere. Nigerians are really amazing people in terms of supporting cancer control, both in terms of philanthropists and also, you know, celebrities who have been part of what we've been doing. Um, but you see, um, a lot more needs to be done because the investment in cancer control both from the aspect of the government is really, really low. You know, just a few, few months ago, Nigerian government launched the National Cancer Control Plan for 2015 to 2022. And the plan was to see how we can comprehensively tackle cancer in the country. Because think about it, you know, we have millions, we have thousands of people leaving Nigeria every single day for medical tourism. Nigerians have lost interest totally, you know, to the healthcare system. So people no longer trust Nigerian doctors, people no longer trust the nurses, no longer trust the system. So people are, you know, moving away, going to India, going to UK, going to US. You know, even the doctors that we have are also Nigerian, are also moving away from the system as well. You know, so we're no longer having what you call the brain drain, but also the patient drain. So these are very strong issues that need to be addressed urgently. The cancer control plan stated that Nigeria needs about you know, 97 billion naira to really fight cancer for the next five years. Where is that money? Is the government committed to bringing that kind of money to tackle this? 
while we were losing, you know, all our mentors, losing older people from prostate cancer, from breast cancer, because they don't have access to radiotherapy. So, in as much as a lot of NGOs, a lot of people are doing a lot, but the truth is that there is still a lot more that we need to do. I mean, in, of blessed memory, we heard that uh, recently, the governor of um, Bayelsa, they just lost the mother to breast cancer. breast cancer. Well, Tracy, let me come to you. You see, in Nigeria, once people have cancer, they just give up. They say, well, something must kill man anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's the expression. Uh, is cancer really just genetic? or is lifestyle related, and how can it be prevented? So for breast cancer, for example, you just brought it up. I mean, the biggest risk factor is just being a woman because it's much more common in women than men. Um, then it's a disease of aging across the board. So as Nigerians live longer, healthier lifespans, the incidence of cancer will go up. Um, it is associated with being overweight, um, mm. and increased physical activity is a protectant for many forms of cancer. Mm. OK. Uh, but in Nigeria, um, I read somewhere that Nigeria has the fifth worst seroprevalence, the, the fifth highest rate of seroprevalence with regard to cervical cancer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are the uh, risk factors that produce, predisposes people to cervical cancer? Okay, so cervical cancer is caused the vast majority of the time by an infection called uh, human papillomavirus, or HPV, that okay. you get through sexual intercourse. Okay, I pulled some stats looking in 2015, less than 10% of Nigerian women had ever had a pap smear looking for cervical cancer. You compare that to the United States where 70% of women in the last three years have had a pap smear. And almost everyone's had someone during their life. The whole point of a pap smear is to catch, find out that the woman has that virus and catch that cancer early. Okay, the reason the mortality rates are so high, the number you just gave was about 80% mortality, right? So the reason mortality rates are so high is because it comes to, comes to notice late stage. So when someone prevents, presents with or comes to medical attention with an advanced stage cancer, you usually cannot cure it. You almost never can cure it. Okay, and outcomes are much, much worse. If you screen women for cervical cancer, you're going to find it at a lower stage, which means less cancer. The less cancer you have, the easier it is to cure. On top of that, there's even a vaccine that will prevent the vast majority of cervical cancers. So if you vaccinate women before they have sexual uh, encounters, okay, you can dramatically decrease the risk of cervical cancer with the vaccine. The vaccine works somewhere around 98% of the time. So talking about cost and all of that stuff, if you screen and vaccinate, you're going to decrease your mortality rates dramatically and prevent a lot of cancers. But, you know, smoking and alcoholism, you know, are also risk factors. Yeah, but the cervical cancer is caused by a no, virus. No, well, yeah. no, not with regard to uh, uh, cervical cancer. But right. I mean, generally, yeah. people who smoke and people who drink heavily, uh, they could... Uh, and so is hepatitis B which somewhere around 10% of Nigerians have, okay, and that's a risk factor for liver cancer, and that's the second most common type of cancer in men in Nigeria right after prostate cancer. Yeah. And that's also caused from sexual intercourse and from exposure to body fluids. Really? Uh, it looks like uh, Nigerians, are, Nigerians are sexually... Uh, uh, overactive <laughs> from what I'm hearing. Oh, know. no, 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 no. they're not taking think, the vaccines. Yeah, mm. yeah, and, and I think also I wanted to mention this because he already mentioned some very critical aspect of it. But also for cervical cancer, it's this kind of cancer that you never see the same terms mm. till after a very long time. So it's surprising a woman can actually have cervical cancer for like five years, six years, seven years. She doesn't even know she has it. When the symptoms start coming out, it's already at a very late stage. That's when the woman starts seeing, like, you know, bleeding and all those kind of stuff. By then, it's very, very late. In other countries, you realize that screenings are done very early. I mean, people, women actually have, like, they do their screening once every year for pap smear. But here, the people only go for screening maybe when some NGO organize something in the church, or probably when some sporadic kind of screen. Or could it be that the screening is expensive? In Nigeria, we have a very cheap screening that you can really afford, which is all about 1,500 naira. And right now, it's accessible in most of the facilities. 
But the thing is that in Nigeria, we also have this attitude that we don't want to go to the hospital except we are carried to the hospital. That's also an issue again. Mike, you were going to say something about cost. He, he already said it. But what of the cost of treatment? When oh, it goes, it does, so the tr cost of treatment goes up the later the stage the cancer is. So if you catch a cancer early, it's way more curable and it's going to cost way less to treat it. And what costs even less than treating cancer is vaccinating to prevent the cancers. Well, Tracy, you've interacted with a number of oncologists uh, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Um, what's your assessment of their capability, their, their skill level? I think they're very skilled individuals. The problem that you really have here in Nigeria is that women present or patients present with late stage disease. So cancer in general, if people are screened and present early, is highly curable. Our cure rates for breast cancer are excellent if they're picked up early. But if a woman presents with very advanced stage disease, then her cure rate really decreases, and that's a larger challenge for the oncologist. So they're really fighting an uphill battle right now. Um, but we hope to improve upon that. Okay, can you tell us a little more about the places you've been to mm -hmm. and the, kind, the specific kind of training you've given uh, the Nigerian doctors that you have met? Sure. So we were um, in Abuja at the where were we? National Hospital. National Hospital, where we watched um, clinics and interacted with oncologists who are in practice, and then we had um, educational sessions as well, um, and interacted for more than a week um, with the 44 clinical oncologists here in Nigeria. Gave lots of lectures, lots of case studies, um, and I think we had a you know really good session. Mike, you in the process, you must have seen a number of our hospitals. Uh, what, what was your impression? Yeah, the National Hospital. Yeah, the renovation, what was your impression? The renovations they're doing are beautiful, and it's expanding nicely. It needs hand sanitizer or functioning sinks in the rooms. Um, so that's one thing that I picked up right away. Um, but the doctors are working very hard, and they're very smart, compassionate. Did you check out the equipment, the facilities? Will you consider them to be of uh, international standard? You need more radiation machines. We need more radiation machines. Dramatically so. So I think there's three functioning right now in Nigeria with 180 million people, if I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. Just three? Three. Yeah. In the entire country? Yeah. Correct. For 180 million people? Correct. And you contrast that to the United States. So I live in a city of about a million people, and we have 10 to 11 functioning machines. So what then you do is you drive, when you have that few machines, you're driving up the cost and you're driving up the wait times. I heard some of the doctors telling them, the patients, that it would be two, three months before they could start radiation. Exactly. And then if the whole point of doing screening and everything is to catch cancer early, because again, your cure rates go up, waiting two or three months can dramatically change things. Mm. Chidebe, yeah. your NGO, how often do you interface with the government at yeah. various levels? Yeah, so every year we have what we call the World Cancer Day. Uh, we are recently That's just in February. In February. And we organized this at Transcop Hilton. So graciously, you know, thanks to everyone, we are just nominated for a global award in, in Malaysia. So we do that event as a strategy to engage the government, you know, both at federal and state level. We also have the Pink October, which we usually do in Lagos here, to also engage. And thanks to the U.S. Embassy that have really been funding this project since 2015 and also Dana Air. And so a number of companies... And uh, we also have a number of other advocacy engagement that we really power up to engage both the government and also appeal to philanthropists to really support the fight against cancer. In fact, let me just add to what he said. In, in the U.S., for instance, you know, just 19% of people who are diagnosed of cancer actually die. But in Nigeria, you have over 51%. That's because sometimes accessing treatment, yeah. it's really tough. And it takes time. And you know, when it takes more time to access treatment, cancer is not waiting for you. The cancer continues to spread from, from the breast to other part of the body. So, Tracy, have, have you guys been to other African countries, or this is just, it's only in Nigeria that you have this training program? As part of this program, this has just been in Nigeria. I personally have also been in Ghana um, working with uncle. You've been in Ghana? Yes. Before? Yes. For a similar training program? It was similar. Okay. Yeah. So, how do you compare what you saw in Ghana and what you are seeing in Nigeria? I think a lot of the um, barriers seem to be the same. Um, a lot of women still are, I always say women because I'm a breast cancer doctor, so I apologize, but a lot of patients um, present with more advanced stage disease and there are many of the similar struggles, although there does seem to be, in my 
limited experience, a little more supply um, in Ghana than there is here in Nigeria in terms of resources. Uh, Mike, she just said she's a breast cancer specialist. Right. What's your own area? So I see lung cancer, GI cancers, and blood cancers. I see. Okay, but uh, apart from uh, the training, I mean, have you had the opportunity to, I mean, go around Nigeria, mm -hmm. see, I mean, what's your impression? This is the first time you've been here? No, it's my second. Okay. Um, it's my first time. It's my first time. Okay, so how do you feel? That's a beautiful I mean, Abuja, Lagos. Yeah, you know. I just got into Lagos yesterday. You guys, traffic is very light. I mean, we got here in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, the traffic is not always two, light. Two hours. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I don't know Lagos yet. And Abuja is a beautiful city. Well, today is Friday. I mean, you should take time out, mm -hmm. check out the clubs. Chidebe, take them out to the clubs. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah? To the I'll markets. Try. To there, there should be uh, a tourism site to your, <laughs> to your uh, visit. So, uh, Chidebe, you've done this. It's really good. But yeah. I'd like to ask you, are you a medical doctor? Interestingly, I get this question everywhere if I'm a medical doctor. I am not. I would really say I dive into cancer accidentally. And I just feel that every young person out there, everyone out there, really don't have to, you know, solely depend on what we study to make a difference. The difference is in us. I mean, certificate do not define our success in life. Certificate is just an addition to what we need to be. It's we as an individual that define what we want to be. I mean, and also we don't have to wait, for instance, for something to affect you directly before you can be part of the change. Just follow your passion and... That is it. I'm a, I'm a psychology by training, you know, yeah, but I started this as my personal CDS project. Oh, great. Well, before we leave, um, I know, you know, Mike has said something about this uh, question I'm going to ask. And you've also said something, just to round up, what would you recommend to Nigeria? What should the Nigerian government do from what you have seen, you know, to improve uh, oncological care in Nigeria? I'll start with you, Tracy. For me, I, people need to have better access to care. Um, I believe that healthcare is a right, not a privilege. Um, and I think if people have the ability to get access and have care subsidized, it will vastly help the situation in this country. Yeah. Mike? Vaccination for uh, hepatitis B and for HPV would have a big impact on cervical cancer, liver cancer, head and neck cancer, and anal cancer. Um, and then just getting public awareness out, doing things like what you're doing with your show right now and having us on so we can talk about it and helping raise awareness and hopefully decreasing fear so people aren't afraid and so people think, huh, well, I heard this on the morning show, so maybe I need to talk to my doctor and see if I need to get screened. Well, it's been a great pleasure, you know, uh, chatting with you guys on the morning show. I'm sure you someday you'll visit Nigeria again, and yeah. when you do, please come to the morning show. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, very, you very much. much. Well, uh, we take a short break. Well, well, that brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thank you for watching. From my entire team here in Lagos, enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.